welcome to Conversations from the Barn at Everwood Farmstead. These are casual chats with visiting artists, creaky barn, bugs, and all. Enjoy. Hello, this is Conversations from the Barn. I'm Chris Everett. And today I have the privilege of speaking with our friend Jess Arnold, who has been retreating with us all week. And folks may know her from Eustace the Dragon. Uh, we do, and we love that band and that music. And she came this week to write some new music for a new project. And uh, we're so thrilled that you could be with us. Jess, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. It's been an amazing gift to be here. I'm so glad. <laughs> Tell me about your week. How was it? Uh, my week was uh, really beautiful and restful. Every day I walked the paths, all of them, over and over, barefoot. I feel like I got the best week because it was 80 degrees for most of it, but there was the shift into fall, and some of the days were sunny and bright, and then suddenly the week shifted to like a gentle, constant falling leaves around you. And, and that beautiful fog oh, this week, oh too. Golly, it's just been yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah, and I think being alone in such a beautiful, safe space with your phone turned on airplane mode <laughs> <laughs> and uh, without the constant distraction of just what's always happening in the city... You know, it just felt really good. Good. Yeah. I'm so glad. Mm -hmm. Can you um, share a little bit about what you've been working on this week? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I've been working on a few things. I This year... Well, okay, so I quit my job in December mm. to create more space for music and art this year. And then I totally got super depressed <laughs> mm. and which I think probably happens with a lot of people when there's a big change in your life going from a place where I was working constantly and I had a never-ending to-do list and I a lot of people relied on me I was managing two stores and just um, was always on and available and relied on so really being able to put my servant heart towards <laughs> something else it works like it's easy for me yeah and then trying to apply that work towards myself is just so hard um and then of course covid and everything getting canceled and everything i had planned had to do with being with people i'm like ultimate extrovert yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and just always have plans with someone and so uh, I think it took me a long time to turn a corner, uh, and it also has taken me. Taken me. I'm. I'm sure it takes everyone a long time, actually. But it's taken me a long time to rediscover how to be a musician when I'm not scraping together time for it under mm -hmm. a deadline, and when I just have endless amounts of time. And that seems awesome, but it actually was so daunting you know that I like found myself fantasizing about just having like a secretarial job <laughs> just to like <laughs> give me something to do that's not about my own thoughts and and also it's hard to write from a place of of feeling super depressed when you don't want to like bring everybody down right you know but I have learned and am learning that just bringing honesty into every season is so important. And, and to your art. It's to, important to my art. It's important to anyone I'm singing to. I, I never am writing without also imagining a person's face in front of me. Hmm. I just always have a desire to share what I'm singing and so yeah just learning to let go of like the disappointment in myself and just to celebrate that I'm alive and I'm feeling and thinking things and just write them down yeah you know and 
I even thought like, if everything turns out to suck, it's okay. Just do it anyways. This is what you're doing this year and just get through it, you mm -hmm. know? And so I feel like I haven't loved a lot of what I've done, but there have been like some treasures that I'm really excited about. And I'm also learning to let go of the pressure to have a new song every week. Yeah. You know? I want to be writing and working on something all the time, but it's okay for a song to take a year or for me to sit with an idea for six months. And I did that with one of my songs this year, and it's one that I wrote for my Aunt Phoebe and Uncle Jim. He passed away this year, and they mm -hmm. weren't able to like be together during COVID while he was in the hospital. Mm -hmm. So... It's a super sad song, yeah. <laughs> but it just honors them and honors their relationship. And you want to take that time. And um, so I feel like I'm letting go of the pressure to be the same kind of work Jess that I was when I was managing two shops, right. you know, just to be the artist for right now. And I know that that's a privilege to even be able to take the time to do that. Mm. So I just want to do it well and uncover the diamonds, you know, that yeah. are hidden, you know. So I wonder, um, I'm curious, and it's hard to, to, to know for sure, but n knowing the, the, kind of forced deceleration that we've all been in <laughs> through yeah. this COVID period. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, uh, how did it affect uh, the way that you were present this week mm -hmm. um, versus if it were a normal year? Right. Do you think you would have shown right. up or been able to be in this week the way that you are now? Oh, yeah, it's hard to say. I think that if I came here every year, it would probably be different mm -hmm. every year uh, on what needs to be stripped away, you know, in order to really give yourself that artist space. I think that in a way this year is decelerated because all of our plans were stripped away, but it's actually the most frantic year mm. I've had. <laughs> in a long time and so I think that um and maybe even in a way not being able to do all the things we normally would be able to do has forced us to really pay attention in a way that maybe we wouldn't have before mm -hmm. um so I just I ultimately think that there are so many things going on that can cloud our view of what our purpose is and so we can find that in a decelerated year at home where, where you can only be with your family and really learn how to get along yeah you know or you can find that on a retreat but yeah ultimately I think we're just in a constant battle of distraction and, and having to clear that away and find your purpose and find out what are you good at and how do you bring that to the table to make the world a better place and to like stay engaged, yeah. you know? Yeah. And some people have done a great job of that through the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> I think I just was like hiding most of it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But that's okay. You just got to be honest about it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You just bring what you can. That's but, right. Yeah. Um, I'm, uh, I'm curious about your orientation uh, and relationship with nature. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that's <laughs> been uh, really fun this week is to have uh, you as a fellow beekeeper yeah. with us. Uh, we Gosh. harvested honey this week, and you dove head first into the whole kit and caboodle. Um, how, what was that experience like for you? Uh, honestly, I feel like it was life changing. And I, I, um, I think, well, behind that, there is a part of me that, uh, the deepest part of me experiences nature and I just see metaphors and then mm. I apply them to humanity. It's just my, that's where I get into my groove, yeah. you know? Um, so I'm already just like in heaven out here. <laughs> so the, 
the moment you offered that I saw y'all in your B suits and then you offered for me to join, I just was like hundred percent. Yes. Even though that is terrifying to me, <laughs> we go up. Should I just tell the story? Yes, please. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I've never done anything like this. Um, we, I know we're going to get the honey out and I really don't know anything else, but I'm assuming you're just going to tell me everything I need to do. And so we zip up into these suits that, that keep you all, there's no like exposed skin. Right. And then, um, it just was this amazing experience of walking up to a space that if you're not completely covered, and protecting yourself, you're gonna get stung and it's gonna suck. Mm. And the bees, the more we mess with them, the more just agitated they were getting. And you had said to me, just so you know, they feed off of energy. So if you're freaking out, they're gonna sense that. And I was like, okay. And you just really have to mind over matter, tell yourself you're gonna be calm, you're not gonna start nervous sweating or <laughs> you don't need to be afraid and we're here to help these bees they were bearding which i didn't know what that means but they're yeah. like kicked out of their home and it's going to get cold soon and we know we have to take care of them so it's not a scenario where it's like this thing is scary so i'm just going to stay away from it it's like no this is scary and so i'm going to equip myself and get in there there's something about that sound of yes. that many bees and we're taking oh, their I frames just, and and your body just starts reacting yeah you're it's like you're in it's like you're underwater mm-hmm. and the air isn't air anymore it's like bee matter <laughs> <laughs> and this amazing dull thrumming that's just electric yeah. around you and it was an incredible privilege to be able to help y'all to serve the bees Mm. and to be so tender with them and using the little brush to brush their bodies and to feel the weight of them piled on top of each other was just incredible and um yeah it just made me think about how worth it it is to put yourself in a situation that feels a little dangerous but is actually beneficial to you and to the bees and Mm. I just am obsessed with it I'm so so glad it was really fun and it was really fun having you with us but also it was incredibly helpful yeah it's it's a lot of work in that yeah I I couldn't believe you were going to do it by yourselves (laughs) I was like wow I'm so glad I saw them in the moment and I'm glad that I said yes and I feel like the more that I say yes to things the more that I say yes you know what I'm saying yeah so um, I was really grateful. Well, I'm so glad. Thank I, we're, We were grateful, too. <laughs> um, so I'm going to wrap this up with my favorite question. Okay. Which Ooh. is, how have you experienced beauty today? Mm. I mean, there are several things. One is that when my feet were cold for the first time today, mm. they haven't been cold yet walking around on the ground. I've been barefoot all week. And so the leaves were sticking to my feet and every patch of moss, I made sure to stand on it, you know, and you pull your foot back and it springs back up. And um, so just the walks have been amazing. I saw an eagle this morning. I felt sad, but then I thought, no, I just feel melancholy and I also feel hopeful. I feel like I have a plan moving forward mm. with work. Um, and I think that this week has has been a good time for me to be with myself long enough to just accept where I am, mm. you know, and to see the beauty in that and to still experience the world and just to be like, this is who I am in the world right now and the leaves are changing and, you know, So just accepting myself in that. That's big. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, We're going to miss having you here. Oh, my gosh. I already want to come back. (laughs) (laughs) Good. Well, you're a member of the family now. And um, will you keep in touch and let us know how 
your work and music hit the world. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Good. Well, yeah. thanks for being here and thanks for this time. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Conversations from the Barn at Everwood Farmstead. Our theme music is provided by John Mark Nelson. Wishing you all good health.